Recently, I asked a question on Twitter. If we're wrong about Bitcoin, how do you think we would be wrong? One of the most common replies was along the lines of paper Bitcoin and price suppression, which is definitely a topic worth thinking about and discussing. When people say paper Bitcoin or price suppression, what exactly do they mean? Well, my interpretation would be paper Bitcoin means fake Bitcoin. Someone is selling a Bitcoin IOU that's not actually backed by real Bitcoin. And of course, this means someone is buying a Bitcoin IOU, thinking they own real Bitcoin. But in reality, they only own a promise for Bitcoin. This sounds kind of sketchy, but it is somewhat common today. If you hold Bitcoin on an exchange, you hold a Bitcoin IOU. You don't actually hold the Bitcoin yourself. If you hold Bitcoin in an ETF, you also hold a Bitcoin IOU. You don't actually hold the Bitcoin yourself. Of course, if the exchange or the ETF operates as they say they do, then it shouldn't be an issue as long as your individual account doesn't get hacked. But there have been instances where throughout history, where exchanges were selling unbacked Bitcoin IOUs. Mt. Gox, FTX, and BlockFi were three exchanges that ultimately went bankrupt, defaulting on Bitcoin IOUs due to hacks, negligence, bad risk decisions, or straight fraud. In a way, these entities did suppress the price of Bitcoin in the short term. Someone went to go buy Bitcoin, bought Bitcoin from one of these exchanges, and those entities effectively sold them fake Bitcoin. This means the market price of Bitcoin could have been marginally increased if they had just bought real Bitcoin, but someone sold them fake Bitcoin, effectively creating additional supply. So historically, this has already happened multiple times. Bitcoin's price has been suppressed in the short term by entities selling fake Bitcoin. However, these entities blow up rather quickly. If an entity is selling Bitcoin without the Bitcoin, then they typically experience some sort of bank run relatively fast. But what if a very large market participant wants to suppress the price of Bitcoin and they can remain perpetually solvent? Say an entity with trillions of dollars wants to suppress the price of Bitcoin forever. What they could do is open an exchange or partner with an exchange and sell infinite Bitcoin IOUs. They could do this over and over again endlessly until the market just gives up and loses interest in Bitcoin as savings technology. This could work in the short term, but in the long term, I think it would still fail. Why? Because Bitcoin is a bearer asset that is highly portable and verifiable. As an individual that is long Bitcoin, meaning you want the price to go up, you have a responsibility to ensure you are holding real Bitcoin. If you're holding fake Bitcoin IOUs on FTX or Mt. Gox, then you will lose Bitcoin and real wealth. It's in your personal incentive if you are long Bitcoin and looking for the price to go up to hold real Bitcoin and verify that you don't hold a fake Bitcoin IOU. Additionally, even if your exchange is solvent, it's still in your economic incentive to hold real Bitcoin. You don't want to even be holding solvent Bitcoin IOUs not backed by real Bitcoin because that is effectively suppressing the price of Bitcoin. So the overall point is you need to ensure you're holding real Bitcoin. And if you're not sure if you're holding real Bitcoin, then you're probably not holding real Bitcoin. If you want the price of Bitcoin to go up, then hold real Bitcoin. It's the only way to enforce the 21 million supply cap. Buy Bitcoin, hold your own keys, and run a full node. There are many ways to do this. You can buy a hardware wallet, and set up a single signature or multi-signature wallet on any laptop. For both beginners and advanced Bitcoiners, I personally recommend using Unchained to securely hold a significant amount of real Bitcoin. Unchained is great because your Bitcoin is secured by multiple keys, two of which you control and one of the keys Unchained controls. So you are safe and secure, all with no single point of failure. And of course, you can verify you're holding real Bitcoin which will help the number go up by eliminating the potential for fake Bitcoin IOUs. So can paper Bitcoin suppress the price of Bitcoin? Yes. Can it do so in the long term? Probably not, because if fake Bitcoin becomes prevalent enough, there's a large incentive for everyone holding fake Bitcoin IOUs to withdraw their coins and verify they hold real Bitcoin.